Let's move on to the Hennessy, which is uh, a week later. It's a handicap, and at the moment, Bobsworth is favourite. I mean, uh, why anyone would back Bobsworth, who's likely to carry top weight now, I don't know. But talk about Bobsworth. Dis- I was disappointed there, Cheltenham. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he, he won this. Well, this is first of all, this is a handicap, as we know, but it's it's not won by a handicapper. No, this is not won by a handicapper. And and, and he's seen some great performances. Denman, of course, from top weight. Can Bosworth defy a twelve pound higher mark than when he won this in two thousand and twelve? It's a huge ask. Mm. But, but Nicky mm. Henderson's won it the last two times. Bosworth and Trio de Lane, who mm. again. Um, yours truly tipped up. You did, yes. I don't tap up many, but that was another one. That's the second one you tipped up in a year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but as you said, Diamond Harry's won this, Denman, Madison de Boulay, mm. good horses, but they well, tend yeah. to be lower weights. Apart well, from Cla- I think there are some mm. exceptions. Cla- this either goes to either class or horses that do carry the, the weight, likes of um, Denman, like you point out, or it goes to like six or seven year olds that are unexposed types mm. that have come through the um, through the, the novice ranks. When you talk about Bobsworth, I mean, now, I mean, when he won. His, when his Hennessy Gold Cup, he went off at 160. So what's he now? 12 pounds, almost a stone yeah. higher than that. I mean, you can possibly have him on your mind. He won't be placed in any Hennessy off that kind of weight. I don't think he'll even. I, I personally don't think he'll run. He, he may not. I don't, I don't well, share that. Nicky Henderson. Like Nicky Henderson. <laughs> um, I mentioned. Uh, is it Mo Fillet or? Yeah, the mayor. The mayor, mm. and he mm. said, "Oh, that was good, but um, you need to be a supreme horse to win off 163." In the Hennessy, mm. so uh, Bob's worth being one seven two. Yeah, it's an impossibility. Really, yeah, it's, it's an impossibility, and I don't think he's even going to run. I, you know, being head of the market, I, I think there's better options elsewhere. That's the point. It's certainly no value whether yeah. or not you take a view on it, whether you can win. There's no value. Uh, let's, let's not forget about his you know, last season he had. He's beginning beginning for me to look a little bit like long run in the respect that they had that tre- you know tremendous mm. year, and now it seems to be gone backwards. The wheels are falling off. I mean, he had that terrible run in the uh, the Betfair Chase. Um, he went on from there, and then of course. He ran in the he ran in the gold cup, and I must admit, if there was an excuse, I thought the ground was against him in the gold cup. I do think he needs cutting the ground um, because you know, on good ground they kind of just get away from him. But he, either so, he was the disappointment in the gold cup. I think he definitely ran twelve pounds beneath his gold cup run, really, and it was very disappointing. And you know, on his best form, you just couldn't have him, you know, on your mind. So he's an absolute no way. Now um, the Hennessy. I mean, we've got a horse here, Jack Jackadam, uh, fell in the uh, JLT, rated one hundred and forty-seven distance concerned but that was one that we like it was a big ask in the JLT mm. you know it was a big ask given his experience and age and, and didn't work out but if he's not the worst for that he he's quite interesting I, I, have, a th- I have a feeling this year that Willie Mullins is going to maybe bring some more chasers over and if Jack Adam could could win this and he might and I've got a tip in the in the King George as well which will come on to Willie Mullins could actually do quite well this year and I thought Jack Adam was one of those horses that has the potential to be better than he's shown and then See, I'm surprised that we don't, just a very side issue, Willie Mullins, we mentioned, brings his horses over here. We have big enough yards over here for one or two trains to go over to Ireland, and they tend mm. not to do that, do they? But anyway, maybe that's the topic for a discussion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm quite keen on this one. Mm. Yeah, because you, you need a horse, at the end of the day, you've got to look for something. It's not won by a jaded handicapper dropping down the weights. This is going to be won by a horse who's going to, you know, probably go down as a, as a really decent type. And Jack Adam, He's still inexperienced, and that's the worry. You know, this is going to be a big field uh, chase, and he's mm. still a bit inexperienced. So that would be the slight worry. The distance? I don't, no, I wouldn't worry about distance. I don't, think, I don't think that's a problem at all. I do like to see him. I mean, the, the, the kind of criteria that I look for in a Hennessy when I do like him to at least have one over three miles going into the race. I mean, he is bred for three miles. I had a quick look through his braid. I'm not quite sure. I'm not convinced the three mile two and a half furlong he's bred for but he's certainly bred for uh, for three miles and um, you know he's very interesting i love the way he traveled through the race at cheltenham and you couldn't say you know i know he, f- he goes down as a uh, fall-in but um it wasn't one of them was it It was a peck on landing mm. at the time and uh, prov- you know you've just got to um fingers crossed that, that doesn't have any kind of uh, mental effects um on the horse after that but yeah he's definitely an interesting runner um there's another one there lebec um also the one that you want to talk about which is anacotti Mm. And Bywise, Anacotti Bywise? Yeah, Anacotti. I think Bywise would have to improve a lot to win this, but uh, uh, yeah. it has improved already. Anacotti, I mean, last start we seen this horse beating 42 lengths in the RSA, and it was absolutely drawling in uh, front that day with uh, Corin Wood of Donald McCain. Went out, liked to do it from the front, jumped really well. They took each other on. you just got to put a straight line through that. But really interesting in the run uh, prior to that at Chatham, and it was beaten. It was carried top weight, 11 stone 12 this day. It was beating a length and a quarter to Indian Castle. 
There was a nice length back to the third and fourth horse that day. The likes of Ero Gold, if you went backwards through the collateral form, that's real good form. But more interestingly, at Kempton won the Topham, which is obviously a grade one beating Green Flag by 10 lengths. Interestingly enough, Green Flag went on to run behind the Hollywell. And if you take the collateral form lines... If Anna, it involves around the Hollywell, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, but with Anna Cotty, if Anna I remember rightly, and I could be wrong, someone will correct me on YouTube or on, on the programme, I think Anna Cotty first time had put in a bad performance, because I remember backing it first time out. Disappointed, led, and just and didn't perform. But then after that, imp improved. He's not going to win the Hennessy. This is a, not, especially not from the fun. This is a massive ass. Mm. You can't fancy Anna Cotty. I do think, I do think with the Hennessy, it is, you know, I, normally, I must admit right from the front, it is very difficult. I normally like him to be up with the lead or mid-division. I don't think it's a race that you want to be held up in, because being a, generally uh, a flat track, they go hell for leather. Fences come up very quickly. Mm. If you're in mid-division or a little bit more back, you're on sight of the fence, all sorts can happen. I mean, you need to be able to jump well. And this horse did, I mean, I urge you, uh, Billy, to go and watch that race at Cheltenham when he got headed and then all of a sudden, and we're still coming back at Indian Castle. The horse is really brave. And what basically, for all the collateral form line, this horse comes out two lengths behind um, Hollywell. And wh whatever you think of Hollywell, this horse has got a handicap mark of 146 and Hollywell's got a handicap mm. mark of 166. You're so. not roping me in, Matt. You're not roping me in. No, no. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you've got to you mention Lebec. Lebec could be a very well handicapped horse, mm. Lavelle's horse. Again, lacks experience, and but again, you have that potential. Lebec, I thought, was on a quite a good mark. I think it's what one one four eight, something like that. Mm. Um, and also mentioned Smad Place. It was thirty big books in the two thousand and twelve uh, World Hurdle, Stayers Hurdle, as I would call it. Mm. Um, he he again. He he would be a real stay if he comes up a bit soft and he, he tends to handle all ground. I can see mm. Smad Place winning a good race if he's. We've got the um, Tristan Davis Double Ross who, who won a couple of times at Cheltenham last year. We've also got Fingal Bay. Mm. D Double Ross, I think you know, he's handicapped to the hilt. I'm actually mm. concerned about the form when he actually finished third, third or fourth at Cheltenham because he'd already been beaten off those marks before looking, you know, in, so I'm concerned about him. He's like, he'd have no chance here for me. But Fingal Bay, very interesting. Not sure what the plans are for him. I mean, he's, let's not forget, he's only had three uh, goes over the, the chases and not forgetting the form um, he won at Cheltenham. I know it was over hurdles, a listed race. Went off 148 that day. He's actually rated £2 lower now over... Over the chases, the third horse, Pina Dury, went off to obviously win the Grand National. The second horse, Southfield Fear, to went on to win a listed race. Four horse, Trusted Times, went on to be third in the Scottish Grand National. You keep on going through that race and seeing real positive form. Fingal Bay, of course, also ran behind Danast um, in a novice chase. It was over two mile, uh, two and a half miles at Cheltenham that day. You go through all Danas form, you know, what Danast is. Now, he actually gave it weight. He gave it five pounds for a four and a half length beating. So they come out the similar horse. So the fact Fingal Bay gets off a mark of 46 it'd definitely stay for me I think that's what he wants to do yeah I agree I get Fingal Bay Double Ross is a handicapper but I get Fingal Bay that could be a OK, bit. there's one or two others. Uh, Theatre Guides, Many Clouds, Rocky Creek. Rocky Creek couldn't manage to win this last year. So. Man, no, Many Clouds is half interesting, uh, but all his form is in really tiny fields, and this mm. is going to be a bit of a shock to get him out, but you could just see him uh, taking to it. OK. Just uh, one other I would yeah. like to mention is, is Bywise of um, Evan Williams. Now, when I mentioned... Never handicapper. You never handicapper. When I mentioned earlier, you nearly fell off your seat. <laughs> but um, he's really progressive. When you look where he started from on the 18th of January at Taunton, he got an RPR of 130. All he's done is improve. Looks like he's been improving £10 for every run. The last run at Cheltenham um, had to be kind of seen to be believed. I mean, he was out the back all the way. He was never fluent, which obviously you're going to have to be in a Hennessy. I wouldn't have thought it had gone unnoticed by Evan Williams. But this horse has got a bit of class on his day. He ended up winning nine lengths. He was going absolutely nowhere. Uh, Pullman only gets on well with these sort of mm. rogues, if you like. But when well, he came rated, up, What's Byways rated now? Uh, rated 146. He would have to improve, admittedly, on the book, but 14 Evan, pounds. Evan did nominate this race after that last mm. race. He said yeah. they were considering the Hennessy yeah. for so. And they're talking of running on Thursday at Newton Abbott. Okay. Yeah, and there's no, there's no reason why the horse cannot progress. No, and he through, has through the ranks, which, which, which he has. Yeah. And that's a kind of rating, uh, which is obviously related to the handicap yeah. mark, where it could be quite attractive. There's room above, yeah. I mean, I was mentioning Smad Place. He's actually in his fifth season of racing, or he will be, so mm. Mm, that's a bit of a worry. But this horse is, is so unexposed, and there, there is a lot of room for... But it's Nevin Williams does well with these sort of Spain mm. chasers. But and if, if the play, horse was thing, to run, would we be, be with the Mullins one? Jack Adam. 
Oh, I wouldn't be betting on him now at the prices. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't bet on anything now, probably. But I, I, Jack Adam was the one that kind of first jumped out at me, yes. Okay. I think um, Anacotti, Fingal Bear, I'd be very, not at the moment, but I'd be very interested in keeping an eye on them. Better if they both turned up on the day with their conditions, I'd definitely get involved. And by wise, even if he's, even if he's not going to be a Hennessy horse, he, I, I will show you of one thing, he will definitely be better than his mark of um, 146 coming into the season. And even with the camera to tell you that. Yeah.